These are the steps for solving the Atwood machine problem. The Atwood machine involves two masses connected by a string that is threaded through a pulley. We read the problem and take note of the important variables. For multi-body problems, we need to watch out for how the masses are connected. Of course, we take special note about what the question is asking for. We draw the free body diagram separately for each mass. We make sure to subscript the forces based on which mass they are acting on. We set up coordinate systems for each mass based on their anticipated acceleration. In this case, because mass B is greater than mass A, we anticipate the acceleration of mass B to be down and mass A to be up. Here is where you must apply Newton's third law. Look for action-reaction pairs between the bodies where you know that the magnitude of the force must be equal. In this case, the masses interact through the string, which we then declare has to have the same tension throughout. We can also simplify the problem by relating the accelerations. Because these masses are connected by an unstretchable string, the magnitude of their accelerations must be equal. We set up Newton's second law for each body. We take careful note of the coordinate systems we set up for each. For masses that interact with each other, you can set up their equations as a system. In this case, by adding these two equations together, we can simplify the solution. Notice all forces internal to the system are eliminated. The masses now act as a single system. We can now solve for the only remaining unknown. It is good practice at this point to interpret your equation. Notice that this is Newton's second law for the system. The acceleration of the system is directly proportional to the net outside force on the system and inversely proportional to the total mass of the system. 
Note that the acceleration in this case is proportional to the force of gravity acting on B, pulling it in the forward direction, minus the force of gravity on A, pulling it in the backward direction. You can also play around with the interpretation by considering the extremes. For example, if mass A is equal to mass B, then the net force is zero and there is no acceleration. If mass B is much greater than mass A, then the system will behave as if mass B is in free fall. Plug in the numbers with units and get the solution. As always, don't forget to reread the original problem to make sure you made all considerations and answered the question. Keep in mind that not all systems of masses are this simple. Sometimes one of the masses might be on a ramp, might have friction, and there could also be a third mass interacting with only the central mass. In such cases, you must include the additional forces in your free body diagrams, modify your coordinate axes, and solve for unknown forces for each mass individually before creating a system of equations by relating the masses.